What is going on everybody? It is Friday and today I want to release another Freestyle Friday video. I didn't have anything crazy planned for this week so I think this video is going to be a good one for you. It is just a talking video that I shot after the last drill at S12 on day three in Tennessee and this day had a huge impact on me and it's just a quick talking video. It's going to take about eight minutes of your time but give it a look. Hopefully it has some information for you and I'm going to try to explain how it has impacted my life and changed my outlook on carrying medical with me every day. So I'm not going to talk anymore here. Let's get right into it. What's going on guys? So this is day three of the S12 event and this one was an extremely impactful day for me personally. And I just shot a, about a probably an hour long video with um, a couple of the guys that we had on my team. We ran this whole course. It was essentially a, I don't even know how to say it, but like a combination of all of the different things that we've learned over the last two days. And it incorporated some physical hand to hand stuff. And then it also in, included a lot of medical. I mean, if you look at my hands, they're covered, they're red, they're dyed red. And that's from the fake blood from the casualties that we encountered on this course of fire. So this was extremely impactful to me because of the fact that I came here to learn the medical. Like I love shooting, don't get me wrong, and you're gonna hear gunshots from behind me, so just kind of tone that out for the time being. But I love shooting, really I do. And I, I do a lot of training, I do courses every year. I put, I've put tens of thousands of rounds out of my, my firearms. And so I feel comfortable behind a weapon, um, even under stress, even when an instructor is yelling at me, you know, for me to draw my Glock 19 and engage even out to 30, 40, 50, 60 yards, I can do that consistently even when I'm breathing heavy, even when I've got a lot of stuff going on around me, other gunshots, other dynamic. This was totally different today. And I can tell you that when we incorporated a team, so we had five people, when we incorporated this team, and started really getting into the the guts of oh crap there's some people that were shot and we now need to take care of them and move them that completely changed the dynamic of this you know we each had a med kit we had our primary firearm which was our carbine we had three magazines for our carbine we had our sidearms that we had two full magazines and then we had an ifac so each one of us had an individual first aid kit <clears throat> and in that first aid kit there were chest seals there was uh, clotting material, gauze, and two cat tourniquets. That seems like a lot, so like, let's be real, that's about what I carry every day in my backpack, and that seems like such a ton of different medical gear, but I really quickly realized how little that is. You know, today there was just a shooting down in Florida, and there were multiple casualties, and I believe about 15 people shot. <clears throat> I, think, I think four died, but, I mean, put yourself in that scenario where you're in that same position because if you're one of those people that believes that it's not going to happen to, to you you're an idiot and i'm sorry i don't normally get that blunt with people but you're a fool and you're fooling yourself and you are a danger to yourself and especially if you got family and kids come on let's be real let's be responsible for our safety and then dealing with any of the repercussions that come from something like a, a shooting and i i recognize that I'm nothing special, I don't have all this crazy training, and this is my first real medical class that involved shooting and dealing with casualties while there's gunshots and craziness and yelling and stuff going on around you. But that responsibility is on us, every single one of us. Every time you're in a mall, you need to be thinking about that. I, know, I freaking know from now on I'm really thinking about it. And my IFAC and my heavy kit that I have in my vehicle are going to radically change after today. But look, if you're in a church and you, you go to church regularly, talk to your pastors. They should have TQs on hand. They should be able to implement a plan like this because something that I'm learning is, you know, the shooting is an aspect of it that I think is important because let's be real, someone's about to attack your family. They're, you know, wishing to inflict harm on you. You need to have the tools available to hurt them more than they're going to hurt you. You hurt them until they stop or die. I mean, that's how this has to work. It's a cruel fact but at the end of the day you know you're you're responsible for that safety so we need those tools on hand we need to have the ability to put shots on target so I'm not downplaying that but 
I'm also realistically thinking in my head, what am I most likely to do? And I'm most likely to have to use my medical kit to save someone's life rather than my gun. And it's really not that taboo when you think about it because we all know someone who's come up on, a, on an accident and been the first in the scene. It's happened to me a couple times. And thankfully it was never anything crazy. I mean, the one guy was knocked out, and but he was breathing. Um, he came to and things were fine. There weren't any traumatic injuries. But, you know, I'm thinking in my head all those years that, you know, when that happened, I wasn't prepared. And on this day today, I'm telling you that I'm going to be prepared for the future. And you should be, you should be that absolute about it as well. I mean, this should be something that strikes you because this is something you can prevent. When someone's bleeding, there's something you can do about it. And yeah, of course, if someone gets blown in half, that's a different story. But, you know, when these, when these people at these places are getting shot, a lot of the trauma could be dealt with with a tourniquet. And there's oftentimes nobody there to, to help. And people are like scrambling around with belts and t-shirts and trying to do all this crazy stuff. Where if you had a cat tourniquet, or even if you're, you know, now like me, I might even carry four on me in my backpack. But that's four people, and maybe that's only one person. Maybe that dude gets shot in the arm and twice in the leg. And so, like, we got to be thinking about this stuff. And I hope that through my channel and through the videos that I can help encourage you, and hopefully through the B-roll footage that I'm showing, it kind of amps you up as well, because I know now I'm fired up about this. I know that from the medical standpoint, there's something that we can all do about it. So day three, guys, S12, this is phenomenal. This was the day that's going to stick in my head forever. And after this, you know, now I'm hungry for some more medical courses. I don't wanna be a doctor. I don't wanna be a surgeon. I don't wanna be any of that. But I know that I can't live with myself. And I've said this before to a lot of people that I know personally, but I can't live with myself if I know that I could do something about the situation and I either choose not to act or I cannot act because I don't have the proper tools on hand. That could be engaging somebody with my sidearm or my carbine that I carry every day, um, or it could be medical. I mean, imagine how crappy you would feel if you're in that um, store in Jacksonville when someone starts taking off shots and shooting people and either you chose not to act because of fear or lack of training or you were ill-equipped. And I don't want to be any of that. I want to make sure that I can yell orders to somebody, like even stop gaps. You know, we don't even think about that. I would have never thought about it. I mean, you always see the movie, someone's holding pressure, put pressure on the wound, but someone gets rocked next to you with a 5.56. Five, Are you ready for that? Are you ready to shove your kneecap into their freaking pelvis to stop bleeding while someone else grabs a tourniquet to apply it? You know, we've got to, these are things we've got to be thinking about. My encouragement to you guys is just find those courses, take them, learn some medical, get that on your belt of things that you know and your knowledge base. And I kind of feel foolish, honestly, for all those years that I've shot guns and been super adamant about carrying guns. And I mean, I really only started carrying medical in the last year and a half, two years. And it's funny, I mean, if it seems kind of uh, cliche, but if you're willing to poke holes in somebody, you should probably be willing to fix some holes. And that's my next mission. Guys, if you have never taken a course like this, get in on it. And you know, S12 is a great one, but I know Carry Trainer puts on a lot of shooting courses. D-Day Response Group puts on a lot of stuff too. But I'm going to put some links down in this video and future videos as I chop through all this footage to point you to some good courses. But guys, there's so many courses out there. And just you know, kind of vet them, make sure they're legit. But then let's get trained with this stuff. This is what sick person decides to come in and shoot somewhere next. We put bullets in them fast and end it, and then we fix the damage that they've done so people can get back on with their lives. And that's all I've got to say on this. Guys, thanks for watching, subscribe. Leave me a comment because I wanna know what you guys think about medical. I'd like to know what you guys carry. I'd like to know what your loadout is and what kind of plans you guys have. And if you have experiences or knowledge that you can share, leave them down in the comments below. Let's help each other out. Thank you guys, Till next time.